Hey guys, it's Chris at Highline Guitars. You're watching another one of my YouTube guitar building videos. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I hope that by the end of this video, I'll have earned the honor and privilege of your subscription. Okay, so in today's video, I am going to be making the pickups for my six string multi-scale fan fret guitar. Now, the reason I'm making the pickups is, well, there's actually a couple of reasons. First of all, I always make the pickups for all the guitars that I build. I never buy off the shelf pickups. The reason for that is because I figure if the guys who build acoustic guitars can control the tone of the instruments that they build by shaping the wood and how they construct the guitar, I want to be able to control the tone of my solid body electric guitars. And that means I have to make my own pickups. And it's just part of the whole process. It's a process that I really enjoy. The other reason is because the six string multi-scale fan fret guitar requires custom made pickups. There are no pickups available off the shelf that will work in this guitar. And the reason for that is because the pickups have been installed into the body at an angle. Now the angles match the angle of the frets. Uh, if, it's as if the frets extended all the way from the, the last fret on the neck, the 24th fret, all the way to the bridge. As those frets would continue, the angle would continue to change. So I've made the bridge pickup match the angle of what the frets would be in this position, and I've made the neck pickup match the angle of the frets in this position, which actually matches the angle of the end of the neck. So when you do that, the problem is the pull pieces will not sit directly underneath the strings if you use just a standard off-the-shelf humbucker pickup, or a single coil for that matter. So in order to get the strings to line up perfectly with the pole pieces, the bobbins have to be offset slightly. That requires a custom made base plate. And because the bobbins have to be a little bit longer and the position of the poles has to be a little bit uh, more than what a standard off the shelf pickup would be, I have to make custom bobbins. And that's exactly what I've done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you in closer and I'm going to show you all the parts that will go into this and then we'll start winding the uh, bobbins on my CNC pickup winder. Okay, so what I have here are all the components that will go into these two humbuckers. Over here I have the components for the bridge humbucker and over here I have the components for the neck humbucker. Then I've got some two conductor shielded wire that I'll use for... Uh, as the lead wires for both pickups. And then I've got some Philister screws here. These are just your typical humbucker adjustable screw, the adjustable pole screws, and both bobbins will have those. And then I have some uh, non-ferrous brass screws here, tiny little brass screws, and that's what attaches the bobbins to the base plate. Now these components, the bobbins and the base plate, were printed on my 3D printer. And I talked about this a little bit more in detail in a previous video. And if you'd like to go back and watch that to get more information about how this was done, uh, I'll post a link uh, in the upper right corner of the screen and you can go back and watch that if you'd like to. If not, uh, I'll give you just a quick uh, summary of what I've done here. I created these in Rhinoceros 3D as 3D models, and then I exported those and brought those into my slicer program for my 3D printer. And then I printed it out using um, PETG filament. And I chose PETG filament because it has a little bit greater heat resistance. And that's really not important here, but if if I'm going to wax pot these, that might be an issue. If I was to use regular um, filament for this, there's a possibility that when I immerse it into a vat of molten uh, paraffin wax that the bobbins 
could start to fall apart. So I opted to use the PETG filament in order to improve uh, the durability and heat resistance. Now you'll notice that the base is also 3D printed and it's plastic. Normally on a humbucker pickup, the base plate is either brass or nickel silver. And that allows you to ground the base plate with your shielded uh, wiring. You can take the, the bare wire and solder it to the base plate. That's really not necessary. Um, it does help to reduce some of the hum that you might experience, but it's not critical. And if I really want to do it, all I have to do is slap on a piece of copper foil, uh, copper foil tape, and then solder or tape the bare wire to that copper foil, and it would essentially do the same thing. I haven't decided whether or not I'm going to do that. I'll get to that as I am ready to assemble the pickups after I've wound the bobbins. Um, the bobbins, as, as I mentioned, are going to use these uh, humbucker filister screws in each of the pole pieces on both bobbins. So there's no slug bobbin. And I had to actually make a couple of prototypes in order to get the sizes right, in order to fit these um, filister screws tightly. Uh, I wanted them to self-tap into the plastic the way they do on a regular uh, humbucker bobbin. So once I got that, it seems to work out pretty well. Now for the bridge pickup, I'm going to be using an Alnico 8 magnet. And the reason for that is because I plan to put on a fairly high number of winds on these bobbins. Um, I'm hoping to get 5,000 turns on each. And that means it's going to be I'm going to guess roughly about uh, 10K of uh, DC resistance. Now that number really isn't all that important, but I know that when you start getting into a high level of DC resistance, you start to lose your treble frequencies in the pickup. It starts to sound warmer, darker, with the potential of sounding muddy. So by using an Alnico 8 magnet, which is stronger than an Alnico 5, it's similar to a ceramic magnet without being too harsh. So it's going to bring some of those treble frequencies back into the signal, but it isn't going to do it with a, uh, you know, too bright of a sound. So the bridge pickup will have some warmth, but by virtue of being in the bridge position, it's going to be a brighter sounding pickup anyways. But the Alnico 8 will help to keep the outgoing signal as balanced as possible between bass, mid-range, and treble. Now for the neck pickup, um, it's basically the same as the, the bridge pickup, although the dimensions are slightly different because the strings, as they run from the bridge to the nut, they converge and get closer together. So the, the bobbins, um, the pull pieces have to be slightly closer together. So the bobbins are a little bit shorter in length. They're still going to be offset. And for the magnet, I'll be using an Alnico 5 because I plan to put um, probably somewhere between, somewhere around 4,000 turns on each bobbin. Um, I like to do that for the sake of trying to balance the volume. Uh, in the bridge position, you want more winds on your bobbins than you do on the bridge or on the neck pickup because the neck pickup, when selected by itself, will sound louder than the bridge pickup will. So if I go with more windings on the bridge pickup, I can bring that volume level up so that it's closer to what the neck volume will be. Now, this isn't an exact science. Well, it is, but uh, in the case of, of a multi-scale fan fret guitar that's never been made before, uh, it's difficult to reliably calculate um, the, what the difference should be. But I've decided that the neck pickup will have 1,000 fewer turns than the bridge pickup. And we'll see how that sounds. If I decide that's not adequate, it's, it's not quite right, I can always rewind either pickup to try to help balance that out. But it's not a critical situation. Um, I'm not going to worry about it too much. Now for the uh, hookup wire, the lead wire, I'm just going to be using shielded two-conductor wire. Um, a lot of folks like to use shielded four-conductor wire because 
that gives you the opportunity to um, do things like coil splits or uh, phase switching. Um, I have no interest in doing that with this particular guitar. So I'm just going to use two conductor wire and wire it up to the controls like normal. Okay, so this is my setup for winding my pickups. This is my CNC pickup winder. And I've talked about this many times before in other videos. Um, in fact, I'll, I'll put a link to a video up above if you'd like to go and watch more in detail how this uh, pickup winder was built and how it works. But in a nutshell, uh, with this winder, I can program in the number of turns that I want on each bobbin. I can control the tension using this magnetic tensioner, which precisely controls the tension all the way around the bobbin. Um, that's not as easy as you might think because a bobbin is not perfectly round. It's oblong in shape and as a result, the tension varies around its perimeter. So with this tensioner, it controls it to keep that tension even all the way around. I can also control the traverse and I have the ability to select from several different patterns so that I can control whether it's going to be an evenly wound coil or a scatter wound coil um, and to varying degrees. So I just have to attach the bobbin to the base plate here, program everything in, and all the programming is done on my computer. I have a software program that controls how the winder works, and then it creates a G-code file which it sends to the uh, electronics which then control everything as it's being wound. So that's kind of how it works in a nutshell. So I'm gonna go ahead and wind a bobbin. All right, so the first thing I have to do is measure the dimensions of the core of my bobbin. So I'll use my digital calipers, and I'm measuring in inches here. That's how my software program works. So the length is 2.471 inches. And then the thickness of the core is 2.56 inches. And then the height of the core is 2.46. So I can then input those dimensions into the software program on my computer. With the eGuitar Plan CNC Winder software loaded and launched, I can input those dimensions. So I've got the core height, the core width, the length of the core, the desired turn count. I want to put 5,000 turns of wire on each bobbin, so I will type in 5,000. The motor winder speed, I want it to spin at 1,200 RPM, so that's what I'll type in here. And then this will tell me it's going to take 4 minutes and 17 seconds to wind a bobbin. Then I can go over to my GCO Builder tab, and I can select either clockwise or counterclockwise, and I can do either no scatter, minimum scatter, moderate scatter, or maximum scatter. So I like to do maximum scatter, and I'm gonna do this in a clockwise pattern. And then I can save this to the hard drive on my computer. And I will call this MS for multi-scale, B for bridge, 5,000 turns, clockwise, maximum scatter. And now I can, I've created the G code and the G code can then be loaded into Universal G Code Center. And this is the program that actually will send the G-code to the winder. So first thing I have to do is connect to the winder, which I've just done. So I have a, that, that shows this list of all the different settings shows that it is in fact connected to the Arduino that's inside the winder. So all I have to do now is load that file. 
and it's right there. But before I run it, I have to install the bobbin onto the winder itself. Now the best way to stick the bobbin to the bobbin plate is to use the good old tried and true masking tape super glue trick. And this is really important because if, if the bobbin doesn't stick firmly to the base plate, as it's spinning and the weight of the wire that is winding around the bobbin core increases, that can cause the bobbin to slip on the plate. And when that happens, it can really mess up the winding. So I've got to use a method for firmly attaching the bobbins to the plate and I found that regular double-sided sticky tape oftentimes is not strong enough to keep that bobbin from rotating as it's spinning. So basically what I'm doing is I'm creating a super glue sandwich where the masking tape serves as the bread and what the super glue will do is it's going to keep the bobbin from slipping around on the base plate as that base plate is spinning at 1200 RPM, but then also to help keep the bobbin in position and keep it from flying off that base plate as it starts to get heavier with each turn of coil wire, I'm using this mini lathe live center. Uh, these are normally used on those little mini uh, hobby lathes, but it works great to keep the bobbin uh, from flying off the bobbin base plate as it's spinning. Now unfortunately, it's kind of hard to see the wire that we use to wind around the bobbin core. It's so incredibly thin that it can be kind of a challenge to capture it on video. But what I'm doing is I'm feeding it through the traverse and then attaching it to the bobbin. Then I have to make sure that I have a little extra length that I can tape to the bobbin plate and that will serve as the uh, start lead of the coil and you got to remember that the coil is just one incredibly long length of wire so at the very end once I finish winding it that last piece coming off of the bobbin is the finish Now it only took about four minutes to wind 5,000 turns of wire on this bobbin. So the next step is to remove the bobbin from the base plate. And I have to do this very carefully because I don't want to break the wire that I'm going to use to solder to the leads. So I've got to gently remove the tape that held the wire in place while it was winding. And then I have to remove the bobbin from the, the, the bobbin plate and, and all of this has to be done very carefully because uh, for one thing there's nothing to prevent the wire from unwinding so one of the things I, I will often do is I'll use a piece of that black paper uh, it's sort of a cray paper tape quarter inch wide and I'll just stick a piece of that tape onto the coil right where the finish wire is coming off and that'll keep it from unraveling so then I can pull the bobbin off the plate and remove that masking tape. And there's actually two pieces there, one that was attached to the back of the bobbin and one to the bobbin plate with the glue holding the two pieces together. It does a pretty good job and it's cheap. And then the next thing I've got to do is attach my lead wires to the start and the finish of the coil. And typically I'll use a black wire for the start and then a white wire for the finish and I'll just solder them with the um, the ends of the coil wire and then once I have that done I can then wrap the bobbin in some of that quarter inch wide black cray paper tape 
and this is done just mainly to protect the coil as I'm handling the bobbin while I'm assembling the pickup. What I have to do now is I have to figure out which side of the magnet is north polarity and which side is south polarity. And the reason for that is because I want the bobbin closest to the bridge to be south polarity and the other one obviously would be north polarity. Well, the ma magnets aren't marked that way, so I'm going to use my Gauss tester because it will tell me which edge of the magnet is north polarity and which is south. So when I put the tester up to it, it indicates that it is south polarity. The other side is north polarity. So I want this edge to be on this side for that bobbin. That way this bobbin will be south polarity, closest to the bridge. This one will be north polarity. And then once I've installed them, I'm going to wire these two white wires. They represent the finish on both bobbins. So by wiring those two together, we'll make them, these two bobbins, wired together in series. Then I'll take my two conductor wire and I'll wire the hot to this one and then the ground to this one. We'll get to that though in a minute. Now before I assemble all this, I need to install the filister screws, which are the pull pieces. So I decided to go ahead and stick some copper foil tape to the bottom of the base plate and that's just to help uh, reduce some of the 60 cycle hum that plagues guitar pickups. Now it's not really a guarantee that it's going to shield out all of the hum because after all the top of the pickups are exposed so they can pick up that 60 cycle hum fairly well but it, it's easy to do this and it certainly doesn't hurt so there's uh, no reason not to do it. Now it's just a matter of assembling all the parts together. So I'll press the uh, bobbins into the base plate so that the pole screws go through the holes in the base plate. Then I have to insert the Alnico 8 magnet down in between the bobbins and the base plate so that the edges, the long edges, are in contact with those pole screws. That's how those pole screws become magnetized. Then I'll uh, permanently install the bobbins by uh, attaching them with those uh, tiny little brass screws. Since I'm using shielded two conductor hookup wire for this pickup installation, I can take the bare wire and tape that to the copper foil that's on the bottom of the base plate. And then I need to solder my hookup wires to the lead wires coming off of the bobbins. Now I don't want the bare solder joints to be exposed uh, or running the risk of coming into contact with one another because that would short out the pickup. So I'm going to cover those solder joints with 16th inch diameter heat shrink tubing.
Next, I want to kind of tidy things up a bit by snipping off any excess heat shrink tubing. And then what I want to do is I want to tuck those wires in between the two bobbins because there's just enough space there where I can tuck them in and get them out of the way. One thing I notice as I got this assembled is there's nothing supporting the edge of the bobbin between the bobbin and the base plate. Normally on a humbucker you have either a spacer bar or the wire itself, but this wire is too thin. So what I've done is I cut a couple of eighth inch dowels and I'm going to just stick those in there. Then I'll tighten the mounting screws, which will pinch it. And that will help keep the bobbins straight instead of kind of leaning over where they where those that that space was that gap there now it's now there's no gap between the two bobbins at the center so what I'm going to do now is wrap the whole thing in humbucker cloth tape. This is half inch wide. Perfect. A completely custom fabricated six string multi scale fan fret bridge pickup. And the DC resistance is 11,000, just over 11,000 ohms. So it works. Four point one six Henry's, so that should be a fairly warm pickup. Um, not terribly warm, but a little bit warmer than the neck pickup because that's going to have fewer winds on it. Okay, so I finished making the bridge pickup, and now I'm ready to move on to making the neck pickup. However, I'm not going to show that in this video because the process is exactly the same as what I just showed you, and there's no point in duplicating it. So for the next episode, what I'm hoping to do is level sand, polish sand, and buff out the top coats on the body to a high gloss mirror-like shine. Hopefully uh, the Crystal Lac Bright Tone will have fully cured by then, which it should. So I'll be able to cover that in the next episode. In the meantime, if you've enjoyed this video or got anything out of it, I would really appreciate it if you would click the thumbs up button. Just take a second right now to do that. It really helps uh, my channel. And if you want to take your support to the next level, you can visit eGuitarPlants.com or my Highline Guitars merch store. There's links in the description below. And there you can purchase plans for building guitars as well as a lot of the tools that we use to make guitars. And you can pick up a cool t-shirt as well. At any rate, um, any purchase you make is going to help support this channel so I can keep building guitars, showing them in videos, and sharing with you my experience and my knowledge and hopefully educate you on the process of building your own custom electric guitar. 
And if you want to keep uh, your support really simple, you can just click the thanks button down below and leave a tip in the amount that you think is fair. And as always, until the next episode, take care, stay safe, and I hope you'll be back for the next episode in this six-string multi-scale fan fret guitar build series.